The spring of 1795 had finally arrived. It had been a long, hard, and cold winter in the Wegiwam. He had spent much of his time hunting, scouting the area, and plying his carpenter's trade in the growing town of Masseyville. Settlers and supplies on flatboats were coming down the Ohio nearly daily now, and he was paid well for his services. He was not only building cabins, doors, and windows, as well as carts and wagons for the settlers, but he also engaged in helping unload and dismantle the flatboats that came down from such far off places as Pittsburgh. As such, there was a seeming endless amount of supplies to offload and no end of eager young families headed by sturdy, determined men to buy them. Even though he was eager to begin his own cabin, the hard currency that he was earning through his labors was helping him purchase the nails and other necessities that he would need for his own home. He was also able to send and receive the occasional correspondence. His family had fared well in his absence, the children were growing, and neighbor M was helping with the heavy chores. Elizabeth, the eldest, had become quite adept at keeping game on the family table, and all were eager to be reunited. He had picked out a good spot for a cabin in a secluded spot across a large stream and up the bank away from floodwaters. Now that the ice had melted and the snows were gone, he would finally be able to lay his ax to some trees and begin the laborious process of raising a cabin. He had offloaded his tools and supplies to bring the cart down the bank to the edge of the stream. And when it was repacked, he began to carefully pick his way across the rocky bottom, looking for holes and doing his best to take care upon the slippery rocks. He could ill afford a sprain or worse, a break at this time. The cart towed well and he was once again grateful for the generous trade that he had made for it. Hopefully, when all the cabin supplies were purchased, he'd be able to earn enough money to also buy his watch back. Going back and forth the 12 miles to Masseville every few days with his carpenter's tools was indeed tiresome, but well worth the effort, he reckoned. After all, it helped to break up the monotony of the long winter, and he had been glad for the company of other folks. Now he was headed back up the long trail towards his future home. The trail was still slippery with the spring thaw, and he fell several times, but without injury. He found the spot he had marked with the blaze and lowered the cart staves to the ground. He had seen some old moccasin tracks on the ground, and he warily stepped down the trail, ever alert for danger. One never knew whether or not a raiding party had come down from the north. The Battle of Fallen Timbers had just taken place last August of 94, and though there was talk of a treaty, nothing yet had been signed. He scanned the area carefully and deliberately, his trained eyes raking over each log and stump, probing their depths for a feather tip or a bit of moccasin peeping out. Well, he looked quiet, 
So he brought his felling axe down to a large log, which lay in the road he was going to build to his cabin. As always, he placed his powder horn and shot pouch over the mouth of the flintlock, near to hand, and ready to grasp and run should it become necessary to flee. He readied himself to begin chopping. Suddenly, however, the handle of his felling axe broke upon impact. He looked up, stunned, complete disbelief. He'd used that axe all winter without fail. Just one more obstacle in his path to his future. Well, it still had the stump of a handle, and he'd get along best he could. But his spirit sank with every blow. Well, after a few minutes, that was enough of feeling sorry for himself. He was a carpenter after all, and he was surrounded by saplings. As soon as he cut the sapling down for his new handle, a new buoyancy lifted his mood. He'd not come all this way and endured a bitter winter to let such a small setback bring him low. Being a carpenter, he had fitted many such handles over the years, and all he had to do was work it down a little, and it would work just fine. After working on the handle, he brought out the mattock and shovel to begin leveling the cabin site. After a couple hours, he paused to catch his breath and look out over the new homestead. Then, back to work. Two weeks later, he was ready for logs. He had cleared the ground and leveled it. He built rock piers and a fine road to the cabin. Yes, this fallen cedar looked just about right. Before starting, he checked his new handle. It hadn't time to properly season, but he'd harden it over the fire, and it should hold out until he gets some proper hickory or ash to replace it, all in good time.
After cutting the log in two, he readied his buck saw. He would have proper cut ends on his cabin logs. The trail now had quite deep ruts from his many trips to and from the cabin. He was also quite proud of the fine road that he had made. It felt quite good to lay the first logs, and being cedar, they would resist rot and insects for many a year to come. Soon, the logs were nearly head high, and he worked steadily and faithfully, using the draw knife to debark each one. The main lower logs were largely fallen ash trees that were already cured. One did not build with green wood, as it would shrink, twist, and warp the cabin as it dried. This first cabin was not large, but he was in a hurry to get it done as soon as possible, so that he might return for his family. From time to time, he also used the axe to remove the knobs and stumps of dead limbs to make it easier to debark the log. The cabin was coming along nicely. Now for a drink of much needed water. As he often did, early one morning, he decided to go squirrel hunting. The noisy critters were always about, and having finished the buffalo last week, he was getting a mite ravenous for meat. 
He had also added a bit of canvas to the wagwam to shelter the cart, as well as give him an open space to work out of the sun. This seemed a perfect morning as he exited the Wagiwam and looked around him carefully, making sure that all was well before he left on his hunt. He'd always enjoyed squirrel hunting, and even though the heavy caliber of his flintlock was too large for such small game, he'd learned long ago how to bark a squirrel. Well, he wasn't having much luck this morning. So he tried an old trick. He took a stick and placed his hat on it in full view of a squirrel tree. There had been a squirrel looking at him and barking at him, but he'd been unable to get a shot. The squirrel, being a curious creation, would come around the tree trunk to get a good look at the hat, and this would give him ample time for a clear shot. proper gray squirrel. One could never be sure who was in the area and who had heard the shot. So quickly he hurried the couple of miles back to his wagwam. After cleaning it, he put it on a spit over the fire, where it would roast nicely. Well, it was time for a little salt. When it was done, he bowed his head in a prayer of gratitude for the meal. His stomach was gnawing at his backbone, and he was sure enough ready to eat.
it sure tasted fine, and a swig of water would go down nicely too. He not only had to spend time hunting and working in Massiville as a carpenter, but he also had to work on his corn crop too, which was coming along well in the fertile Ohio soil. He wanted to make sure and have a fine crop laid in for his family when they came back. He'd managed to get a straw hat and an extra shirt from a widow woman in exchange for repairing her leafy roof shakes, and he was glad for them in the hot August sun. Even though all had been quiet on the frontier, he still kept his flintlock handy, leaning just behind him against a huge tree. He was getting a little anxious to get the cabin done now, as the weeks went by and it was nearing the end of summer, and so, he put in as much work as he could on it every passing day. Soon it became a familiar routine. He would crawl out early one morning, put together his kit, make sure he had his rifle and flintlock, and then hoist the tools to his shoulder and begin the long walk to the cabin site. By 1st of September, he'd made real progress, and it was starting to show. Today, he'd be cutting off the rafter tails in preparation for the shake roof he'd put on. With the help of Providence, he'd be able to rive out all the shakes and get them nailed on fast by month's end. He'd also built a couple of sturdy ladders to help him in his job. He examined his level Spirit level looked well and ready to go. He'd also need the plumb bob and his pencil.
Well, the job was done and the roof was ready. He felt a real sense of satisfaction this day as he completed his work. It had taken a lot of work, but the cabin was up and the door and the window frame was in. He took one last look around him before he headed up the trail and back to the Wegewam once more. With the help of Providence, he'd have a snug cabin before the first snowfall. <laughs>